Hello, this is Jeff Ryle from G4 Geomatic Resources in Houston, and uh, we're going to do a series of four videos just going over the Traverse application. And um, so the first one we're going to do is just a basic overview, uh, some important tips. So please pay attention because it can make uh, Traverse in the field just following these tips a little bit easier and reduce errors. Um, so what we're going to do is first go over the different prisms and that are available for Traverse in and uh, carriers and options for measuring to reduce uh, errors in height. Uh, we'll take a quick look at setting up a control job. So in this case here, we're gonna run uh, two RTK points as our starting pair, and run a traverse around this job site. And uh, what we wanna do is make sure that we set the control job up properly to uh, incorporate those RTK points. And we'll just uh, do some basic uh, overview of the traverse settings and uh, how to put in temperature and pressure. Uh, we'll take a look at the Traverse application and how, how to customize it and some basic settings. And we'll talk briefly about the geometry of the Traverse. And it's also possible um, to export a report after the Traverse is done. So we'll just show you how to do that as well in the settings. The first thing to look at is uh, when we do a tra Traverse is um, the prisms that we're gonna use. So in this case, let's just go over the LIGA options and the advantages that this will have. So uh, the first step is the carrier. There's several different carriers that are available. Uh, if you use a LIGA prism, you use a LIGA stub, it snaps on, gives you a true vertical. The center narrow is right at one millimeter. This would be good for sitting up on tripods. And um, this one, this G GRT144 is if you're gonna use a tri with an optical plummet. If you, do, if you have a tri without an optical plummet, the GRZ103 has a site here that's pretty handy. Um, the interesting thing is when you have a carrier and a Leica prism, uh, in our case, we're gonna use a mini prism, but you, we can use a circular prism or a 360 prism. All those prisms have the exact same height, okay? And there's a height measuring device, and that's the exact same height as the instrument. So if you wanna do force centering, where you move the back sight prism up to your instrument setup, then this would be very handy for the 103 and the prism and all the heights will carry in the Traverse application. So that's another way to help reduce setup error if you want to do force centering. And using the Leica carriers and prisms will really make that a lot easier. Um, there's also a handy tool, the GMH007. And this snaps into the little carrier here that fits onto the tri -brack. So if you're measuring, uh, doing circular prisms or 360, this will give you a true height measurement. Uh, being metric, but we can set a quick hotkey Convert that feet to meters if you want to work in feet. It's not a big deal. And uh, that'll measure down, and it's prorated to be uh, where that slant is converted to the true measurement. So you're not uh, pulling the tape and bending around, adding three, four hundreds of error to each setup. This can also be used on your instrument. Uh, in the video, the new, the new instruments, as of a couple years ago, had automatic height measuring uh, built in. And we'll see that in the video, in video number two. Uh, but if you had an older instrument, um, then once again, you can um, use this to measure the true height of your instrument to help reduce the, uh, the height errors. If you're, and that'd be really great if you're trying to establish control like on a construction site for anchor bolts where vertical is critical. So this is a handy tool, both the back site and the instrument to eliminate that error. Um, we'd recommend using a Leica prism. You can use a round prism. We have seen some third-party prisms where the glass, the distances are okay, but the glass will degrade over time. And if you're using ATR, automatic target, uh, have a hard time snapping to the, the more variation in the angle. So, um, you know, bare minimum, we'd recommend the GPR113 or 111. These are uh, center and error of two millimeters. Um, and the, the 121 has a center and error of one millimeter, so it's a bit more accurate. Uh, but these should give you good range very good accuracy, and very good repeatability in the angle. So we have some, some issues with third party and older prisms because um, the, the glass can degrade over time. So here's some starting costs. Um, also, you know, once again, here's just a diagram. We have the, like a tri brack put the carrier in, and the prism will fit on the carrier. We use a height measuring device. And once again, we'll go through the settings and we'll set the uh, prism offsets uh, on the on the instrument. We did a previous uh, video on prism offsets. It'd be handy re to review. Uh, we'll go through some basic settings on the simulator. 
So um, let's take a quick look. We'll pull the simulator up. And what we can do is we can create a job called Travis. And there it is there. Now what I want to do is the first thing I want to do is hit function home and come over to my design job. And that's if I control points where my RTK points were and they're separate from my working job, I want to make sure that this is assigned first. This is very important because we run that application and we want to close on a certain RTK point and close the angle. It'll be looking in this job for those points and coordinates to do that routine. So you don't want to be out there run the whole traverse and then not be able to close on those points. So it's very important to uh, select that. Or you can come in here to job properties, go to link jobs, and I linked it. So you could come in here and add, you know, whatever jobs you want to link. If you have multiple jobs, then it'll view these points that are available as well to be uh, used as control points. So you can either link it or use it your design jobs. That's pretty important. Okay. Um, the second one we're going to go through is how to set temperature and pressure. So if you're moving, looking for accuracy, we can um, go to settings, TS instrument, atmospheric conditions, and then type in the temperature and pressure. It will automatically calculate the PPM. This can be edited in uh, infinity, but it'd be good to get uh, realistic numbers when you're traversing. You can update that as you go if the temperature and pressure changes. Okay. All right, we'll take a quick look also about the uh, prisms that we're going to use. So this is very important. I like to have the same prism on my backside and foresight. So if you hit settings, TS instrument, measure target. If you've got a 360 prism, you can put it in there. If you've got a 30 millimeter prism, uh, in, in this case, we're using a mini prism. But if I had a like a round prism, you can set that for your foresight. That's what the, the measure is. Once would be two seconds, uh, one millimeter, once and fast is three mil, takes around half a second to take a shot. And you can do it with lock or with ATR. So once again, the Travis routine can be run with a manual total station. So you wanna have this option here, we just have to manually turn. So it'll take a lot, lot longer to do. And the setup would be the back sight. So you have to keep that consistent. So once again, I wanna keep the same prism as my back sight and foresight. In this case, we use the, the mini prism. So I'm just gonna set both up to be the mini prism like we did in the video, okay? But that's how you can change it depending on what prisms you're using to make sure that have the right offset and if you wanna use uh, ATR, okay? All right, all right, so we went through the uh, control job, temperature and pressure, prism, and then there's settings in here for, for Travis. So under here, I got an application called Travis, and once again, I'm running the TS-16 simulator if you buy the NAFTA package um, with the CS20, it'll come with the tra Travis application enabled, but that's on the CS20. So once again, tra Travis application can be on the instrument itself on board or on the CS20, and they're totally separate. So if you purchased the Travis application on the CS20, it does not transfer over to the onboard. Some clients don't have to do onboard tra traversing, okay? So you can purchase this. Um, now, once again, we have the, the application right here. If I hit settings, customization, app visibility, I went down and I, I moved this application up or down to wherever I want to put it. Okay, so I want to move it up, hit OK. And now there's a number there as well. So I could even scroll down to my application, click on it or type in number five, and then it should fire that up. So in this case, I want to create a new Travis, and then we'll just call it today's date. And it's a good idea to put in the operator, the fuel crew. So put the initials. That way the office knows who was working on that job. Okay. And then we'll hit OK. And that, then we can pick the, how we want to shoot. Um, do you want backsight, foresight, or foresight, backsight? Since we have, uh, in, in our example, we have uh, two rods, we can do backsight, foresight, foresight, backsight. Uh, if I was doing a one man operation by myself, I've been running ragged backwards and forwards. That's, that way you pick backsight, backsight, foresight, foresight, and allow mobile foresights will allow, if you want it to tie in like not only traverse points, but maybe boundary corners, it, it can shoot mobile sets to these points as well. Quality control, we'll bump that up to say five seconds. We have a three second instrument, that should be good. The report sheet's real handy. Um, we'll show you at the end, but if I check that, we have to have this format file loaded. 
So if you need help, just send us an email and send you this file. And then you can create a new and just create a name of it. We'll store this under on your data collector under the data subdirectory. It's important, we've got to set this up before we traverse and it'll just record all this information and we'll show you what that report looks like. Okay, all right. So once again, as we said earlier, if you're running in, in a one-man mode by yourself, it's important to select the backside, backside, foresight, foresight, if you're shooting to one prism and you're doing it in a one-man mode. Uh, you can use the, use the GRZ4 prism. This little yellow, uh, little yellow uh, indicator here, like an arrow. And if that's facing the instrument, you get a clean face, so it'd be two millimeter, because this can be anywhere from two to five millimeter. The GRZ122 is a little bit more expensive. It's got the five eighths adapter for smart pole, and it's two millimeters all the way around. So to increase the accuracy, if you have the GRZ4, just face that yellow arrow back to the instrument, line it up when you're taking your traverse shot, and that, that will really reduce any, any area you have. And then once again, we'll make sure we have the right prism offset like we went over before. Real quickly, um, whenever we set a back set up, it's, we always want to have the back set as, as long as possible. But this is especially critical and good to consider for when you boost after this traverse here. So this is one we're running in the back of our office. And we have two RTK points, one and six for basin off of. I really want to get that distance at least as long as these legs here. Because any area here, we could have a few hundreds easily horizontal and a tenth and vertical. Any error in this line will be rotating into this traverse here. So it's important that we establish these RTK pairs as long as possible um, to minimize any rotation error in, in that traverse. Okay, so it's just a, a a basic observation, but just something to keep keep in the back of your mind. So I just want to point that out. Um, once again, we're jumping the next, uh, we're jumping ahead a little bit, but, but before we set up that report option, and I just want to show you what happens after we run it. This is the end of the report. It just shows very cleanly how we uh, start at point number one. It shows the, the length of the error and gives our delta northern easton and uh, gives our accuracy and closure and delta height. And so that's very handy. And in the report, um, each setup will go through and show what point you're set up, this coordinates, what prisms we used, rod heights, and all the raw measurements. This is a very handy report. And once again, it said phase one, phase two. So once again, we're shooting direct and reverse. That's the advantage of the Leicas. We're using ATR, direct and reverse, and you see the splits, and we're using lock mode. And then what's neat is it shows at the bottom of your sets the splits. So it'll show even here, uh, the, the average angle right, the vertical angle slope distance. And it'll show the standard deviation of those measurements and the spread, okay? So this is just a handy report. Like we said, it has to be set up from the start, but it's just a nice handy report that you can put in your job file uh, if you need more information about the, you know, the repeatability of your, your measurements. So hopefully you found that beneficial. Um, um, we'll go on to the next video.